A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with him. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Revelation to John. 
I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered together around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. And they had a community to embrace them. They were the church. We might think of the church today as a place where respectable people come together, dressed nicely and acting politely. We Episcopalians follow the rules and we don't take too well to interruptions or things or people being out of place. And certainly the church of the 1950s and 60s was like that, People joined to worship, sure, and to educate their children, but also to network. In a holdover from that era, my younger brother was recently informed by a senior partner at his firm, you're going to run for vestry. How's that for leverage? As another example of how the church is viewed as a social institution, one of the guests at our community meal asked me what time services were and he expressed concern that he did not own the right outfit for our church. He seemed very pleasantly surprised when I told him to come as you are. What a contrast to that collection of misfits and outcasts that was the early church. The early church was quite a collection of diverse people and celebrated among them was a woman named Tabitha. And since the Bible is a rather patriarchal collection of books, women do not often feature in the stories, so when they do, we should take note. Women also rarely get named in the Bible, and Tabitha is named twice. Tabitha is a Hebrew name that means gazelle, and she also bears the Greek version of her name, Dorcas. This would suggest that Tabitha was bicultural, In a church filled with tension between Hebrew and Greek, Tabitha navigated both cultures and was beloved by all. Tabitha's is the only case in the New Testament where the feminine form of the word disciple is used. 
so she is clearly very important. She took care of widows, and as a refuge for the outcast, the church was a haven for widows who frequently had no means and no body, not even enough money to clothe themselves properly. Tabitha helped to give these women comfort and solace and community. But Tabitha did something more. She clothed these women. Tabitha cared for the bodies of these women, giving them the dignity of nice clothing. What a life-giving ministry. I want to draw a parallel to our own clothing ministry. Just recently, a young man wearing ragged, filthy clothing, his toes protruding from his shoes, he came to our community meal. After feeding him, we provided him with a complete new outfit, including shoes and underwear. He emerged from the bathroom in his new, clean clothes, tears in his eyes, and he said, I feel like a person again. The church clothes people literally with dignity. And by embracing those who have been cast out, the church clothes people with the love of Jesus. Love is so necessary right now because there are so many people who are searching for it. People whose families are bereft. People who have been cast out of their families, even their churches. People who are lonely and scared, especially women now with the leak from the Supreme Court. And no matter how you may feel about that, people are scared. And people are lonely and angry. There are people who have trouble fitting in. That was the church. This could be the church. We could be embracing those whom Jesus loves, those who need him. We are at a turning point as a worshiping community. Emerging from the pandemic, not quite all the way back, we have momentum in some areas and a blank slate in others. What better way to put ourselves out there than to embrace being a diverse collection of people who do not fit the mold, people who stand out, aside, or apart. At some point in history, the majority of the church crossed a threshold from being countercultural to being the prevailing culture. And now in the midst of pandemic, climate change, war, and sickening political divisions, we have a chance for a reset we have a chance to stand for inclusion. Now could be a time of rebirth. Who could come and sit and pray and praise with us? In the spirit of Tabitha and her ministry, what two worlds are we called to bridge? In the spirit of Scarlet, whom we're baptizing today, who are we called to embrace and clothed with dignity and love. The way forward for our congregation is the way of Tabitha. She embraced the outcast. She cared for minds, hearts, and bodies. She was a bridge builder between people in tension. She died and was raised to new life. New life awaits our community. We are longing for God. We come from many types of family. A few are rich, a few are poor. Other communities might not have worked out. Our culture has co-opted or ignored us. Some of us have wide social circles and some of us have nobody. We come together because this is our best place to be. We come together because we believe, and our community embraces us. We are the church. Amen.
We're continuing on page nine in your bulletin. <laughs> All right, we're so glad you're here. Okay. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Will you be responsible for seeing that this child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to up support this child in her life in Christ? We will. We will. Let us join with Scarlet who is committing herself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the house of Pilate, was crucified and died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for Scarlet, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Scarlet T, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. 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 Scarlet T, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Scarlet T, receive the light of Christ and shine as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, this is Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace and congratulations. congratulations. So honored that you chose to do this here. Glad to do it. Oh, don't worry about shoulds. We're glad you're here now. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, and welcome. We welcome Scarlett and her family today as she joins us in the Christian faith. Um, and welcome all those who are online today. Uh, uh, to, we will continue with the service of Holy Communion uh, and be serving bread to you today and two stations in the front. We ask that you follow the uh, usher's guidance coming from the rear to the front. Uh, so those in the back will come first. Um, and then they'll show you how to get here. Um, and if you are able, you can uh, do sanitization of your hands before you come up 
uh, or um, however you're able to. Uh, am I forgetting something else? Uh, if you wish to give a gift today, you're, we will be passing a plate in just a minute during the offertory anthem. Uh, you can put your donation in there today. If you prefer to give digitally or online, you can text CHT Donate to 73256. It's also in your bulletin. There's a QR code in your bulletin as well. And if you're online, you can press Learn More on the Facebook page or our Give button at the top of our website. The offertory sentence. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity 
constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
We'll say together the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, May Christ, who brings light out of darkness, brings a new life out of death, fill you with his light and life. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia.
she was she was fresh in the party, so to speak. She was at firm completion. And then she would come over to Peg's like at two. She was just sick. Right. Sure. So and they're gonna show up tomorrow at some point. So. I've been following the progress of Well like, I've got a call I mean, they stayed in Lawrence Kansas, so that would be yeah. that and was they were in a Yeah, I was trying to figure out how many days because I figured from Lawrence, Kansas could get across Missouri, you know, so I'm thinking it was possible they could have done it in two months. So you get to Indianapolis, from Indianapolis to Columbus. Or yeah, I think actually the level crash and they were stopping somewhere in Ohio. Yeah, in Missouri. Well, then they ended up in Columbus. Probably stopped somewhere in Pennsylvania. I guess, you know, she followed me, she said she's a giant fan, so she followed me, they think. 